We've been waiting so long The season's finally here So get up and cheer Cause Deal's Talk is here No need to fear The wait is now gone So farewell so long Cause Deal's Talk is on Alright everyone, welcome back to Season 2, Episode 3 of Timberwolves Talk. Today, if you do not know by now, I'm Chris and that is Peyton over there. Um, yeah, the last two weeks were great, honestly. It is so nice getting back into the rhythm of doing the podcast every week. Um, Peyton and I are both back at school, so, you know, the grind has started. We're back in our rhythm. Um, we're ready to, you know, it's, I'm getting ready to get the season fired up, man. I know it's still, like, I think it's over a month away, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's always nice to start thinking about it a little bit. Yeah, man. Even as just a sports fan in general, this is the best time of the year, I think. I think it's everything's just kind of starting to get started back up. We got NFL starting next week. I actually, a funny story is me and my roommate, um, Sunday morning, we were, uh, we were getting all ready. We ordered pizza, trying to figure out where we were going to stream the game. Both of us were in our Vikings jerseys. Um, I remember texting my mom like, hey, we're, like watching the Vikings game. And I was getting so frustrated because I couldn't find a spot to stream it. And then, lo and behold, there's no Vikings game this week. It actually starts next season. So I felt like an idiot. But we this pizza still came, still ate it. And, um, and now we're just more excited for next week. So yeah, That's all right. I mean, at least you might have had some college football to watch, didn't you? No, I didn't. I didn't watch any except for I did. Uh, I did. I did go to a Division three football game, um, St. John's University. Big dub, but that's about it. How about you? What? How about you? How? You, how was your college football experience? I know you probably had a pretty good one, right? Going to Madison, big school, probably a great game, right? I mean, you know, it was a obviously. If anyone watched the Badger Penn State game, it was a little ugly of a game for both teams. Uh, both teams missed out on opportunities. Uh, lo and behold, we lost to Penn State at home. I mean, boys got to figure out the offense. I can tell you that. But, you know, it's always like when – so Peyton and I are both juniors this year, and obviously everything was shut down last year for both of us, so we didn't get to go to games last year. And just being able to be back at a live sporting event and, like – No masks. The Johnny games are super fun, too, and obviously the Badger games are fun. No masks. Like, it's so nice to be back just watching live sports. So at the end of the day – we lost, but it was it was nice just to be back watching some football. 100%. So we got a pretty jam-packed in, um, episode today. Obviously, it, it gets a little scarce with Timberwolves news right now. It's kind of the dead zone of the season. I mean, not too much new news. We could talk about Ben Simmons being traded, but that's kind of that all that everyone ever talks about. And kind of what me and Chris were talking about before this is we don't want to just give you guys a bunch of what-ifs because – as Timberwolves fans, that's all we do. All we do is talk about what if this, what if this. Let's talk about what actually is going on with the team right now because, I mean, there's pretty good odds that we're not going to get Ben Simmons. I mean, it's kind of a dream-like fantasy that everyone's thinking about, but I think there's a bigger chance that we won't get him than that we do get him. I think that's pretty fair to say, don't you think? Uh, that is extremely fair to say. I mean, I think we have pretty much touched on every single possible Ben Simmons scenario. Um, there is an article that came out on NBC Sports, I guess, in the middle of the week, um, you know, since the last time we recorded, but it was like they believe the offer was around Malik Beasley, Akogi, and McDaniels, four first round picks and then three first round pick swaps. So, like, seven years of picks. I mean, I've yeah, that's just a no-go for me, man. I'm not willing to sell my sell my future and bet yeah. on Ben Simmons personally. But that's about all the all the news that's been out on the Ben Simmons front. And honestly, Peyton and I are just like we've touched on it in the last two episodes. So until something happens with Ben Simmons, whether he gets traded to Minnesota, whether he's somewhere else, we'll talk about it when it happens. You know, it's that's true, man. I mean, we don't want to we don't want to waste your guys' time talking about something like that. If we've I mean, we've already been covering it so much, but. What we do have this week is something that you guys can all be looking forward to later in the episode. Um, the comment section king, I guess you could call him, Gregory Weasley. Um, he's scheduled to be joining the show here at some point. Um, now, Greg, he has a lot of – sometimes his family can get in the way and he might not be able to come on. But as of right now, I'm going to be monitoring my phone. He is scheduled to be coming on soon, so very excited to talk to him. Um, lo always love having a nice uh, subscriber join the show. But – I think we're going to start out with 
uh, a fun little topic here just to get the get the ice broken. Um, Chris, who is your least favorite Timberwolf and why? Least favorite Timberwolf. You know, that's that's a that's a tough question. Um, honestly, I don't really hate any of the personalities on our team. Like, I think they're you no, know, I think they're all decent guys for the most part. I know everyone's thinking about Malik Beasley at the moment, but you know, I, I think we all got decent personalities on the team. The player that I guess makes me the most mad at times would honestly be a starter, which is Josh Kogi. Mm. Um, I would have said Culver. I think that's pretty obvious, but yeah, Culver's Chris is Chris is a a known Culver hater. I mean, he um he hates the guy. He's so he was so happy when he got traded. It's not even funny. He just kept it on the DL for everyone to see, but he's not. I a did. Big Culver I did. Guy. You know, I I like Jake Lehman, so I can't say my my boy Jake. But when a Kogi, it's just tough with him. He's such a like a one dimensional player. It's tough watching him. him just brick three after three like you get a little frustrated on the couch watching that when he, <laughs> he he's he's a guy who, who honestly too is he's he's not afraid to shoot the three he's he's no, okay he's, he's a okay with missing he's a he missed four in a row bro remember that last year when he missed four in a row like in a one minute stretch That's he missed tough. it got his somehow got the rebound back missed it again and then next possession missed it and then the next possession missed it and ryan kept him in the game of course he did of course no. ryan I, oh, maybe I would have said Ryan Saunders too if we could do a coach. I mean, yeah, I mean Ryan, easy, it's an easy pick. I think I feel like a lot of people will just will just say um, Jake Lehman. I feel like a lot of the people in the subscriber column, everyone's just gonna say Jake Lehman off the top of their head, and I feel like that's really unjust. Like what Jake Lehman has done a pretty good job, I think, of filling his role. He's a bench player that plays little minutes. And sometimes he gives us that spark that he needs. So I feel like that's just not not the best choice. I mean, people are forgetting Jake Lehman was our starting power forward in the season opener last that's, year. That's dude. That you, I do forget that. That's, <laughs> I mean, the fact that me and you thought we were going to make the playoffs last year at the beginning of the season, and then we pull up to the first game with Jake Lehman in the starting lineup. I mean, we should have known, right? Did I mean, we won the game, didn't we? Didn't we beat the Pistons? Yeah, we did. We did that. We it was like our only win. No, we went two and zero. We started off two and zero. We did start off two and zero. Yeah. And everyone was just saying like, "Is this the year?" And then Cat went down. I think no, Cat went down the third game, didn't he? Cat went down against the Jet. We beat the Jet. Yeah. No, that was the sec. Was yeah. it the second game? We beat, the, we Jazz, beat the, the Jazz. Second game. Yeah. Yep. And then Cat went down, and then everything went to shit. But uh, <laughs> no, that just I think, happens. I think I don't think I think we should save. Or we should ask Greg the same question because we'll ask him when he comes on the show because I think he's he used to be a huge Wancho guy. So I feel like his taste in players is very interesting. He's probably the only Wancho fan that we um have ever seen, at least. Do you I, see Wancho got traded for let me pull up his pat the package because it was I, I saw he went to the Celtics. Yeah, but they they, they traded a lot for him. Like it, it was it was honestly like I was like, wow. I feel like we, if we could have got that much, um, that much value for Wancho, I don't know why we didn't do that. Yeah, I mean, when Wancho's, you know, hitting his shots, he's a he's a valuable player at the four. It's just, it's tough, you know, when you're not hitting your shots, and that's kind of all you do, I guess. But yeah, um, well, while, while Peyton pulls this up, leave down in the comments what is your least who is your least favorite timberwolves player because we kind of want to hear what you guys have to say too and um we also kind of touched on this maybe in the first episode but we wanted to do a live watch party for the first timberwolves game and we we're thinking maybe we could have subscribers call in you know yeah. while we're watching the games and you know chat with you guys see what's going on and, you know let us know if you're interested down in the comments we we get like 80 comments a podcast. So you guys definitely have no issues commenting that. So maybe we'll maybe we'll leave a pin comment who would want to do that. Um, comment below. Comment below. And on and realistically, we don't really we don't need people to call in with us to watch it. Like we'll still do the watch party either way because it'll be fun. I don't know copyright how we're gonna be able to do that. I mean, well, you'll just have just us on the screen, and maybe we'll put like a ESPN scoreboard up or something because we can't show the game. But obviously, I mean, I wish we could. Okay, so here's the trade package. So the Grizzlies traded Wancho to the Celtics for Carson Edwards and Chris Dunn. 
for Carson Edwards and Chris Dunn, and then they uh, swapped 2026 20, second round picks. So actually, that's not that terrible. I thought it was worse. I mean, Carson Ed- Carson Edwards is a young guard, and I mean, we we all know about Chris Dunn, the one and done for the Timberwolves. He was a first round pick. He was, I think, seventh overall, wasn't it? Yeah, he's the same like that. Dude, I, I thought he was higher, but I, no, he he was definitely. For some reason, I just picture him as like a number four pick, but he he was. I I mean, yeah, we're we're not the best drafters, you know. No, I, we're one of the worst drafters ever in any sport. Because think about um, who was that guy from Arizona? Oh, we picked um, him second, Derek Williams. Derek Williams, the high Terrible. flyer, yeah. Terrible pick. Um, I mean, Rubio. I mean, we could go on and on. The Rubio and Flynn, 0 for 2. The 0 for 2. Right, all above Curry. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean that's it's tough. not our strong suit, but at least we got Ant. Um, I guess all the Timberwolves fan pages are, are loving this right now. What um, What do you think about Ant growing 2 inches? Is it kind of irrelevant, or is that is that going to turn him into the next Michael Jordan, as everyone's saying? I mean, I – what is he listed as now? It's like six four, and now he's six six or something like that. He's six so, six now, allegedly. I mean, that's a a six four is probably an average size for you know just a normal shooting right. guard, and then moving up to six six, I think that's actually a pretty decent. You know, that's a pretty decent jump. He's going to be one of the big. He already is one of the bigger shooting guards already. So I mean, you're gonna have like you're gonna have like a Demar Derozan type height, and he's he weighs more than Demar Derozan, I think. But my, my point is, is him growing two inches going to make him that much better of a player, or is it really not going to affect it that much? Because he's already his play style is pretty solidified. Is that two inches going to affect him this season? Are we going to see a completely new player because he's two inches taller? I mean, I think he's going to make a jump, and whether think- or not that height helps him within that jump, whether that's a factor in it or not, I guess I'll say, yeah, you know, he's, he's going to be better. I think next season and I, his height could help him, you know, finishing at the, he's a, this is what I'll say is he's, he's a good dunker, but honestly, last year, bad finisher. There was, there was flashes of him having good finishes, but he does tend to miss some like contested layups from time to time. So maybe that helps. Yeah. I think he, um, I think he really lacks creativity sometimes around the rim, at least early in the season, he would always get to the rim. He, he he tried to draw the foul, I think, more so than not. And that's what he – we – you know, that that was a forgotten storyline, honestly, I think, of last season was Anthony Edwards not getting calls. Yeah, especially early in the season. And that's kind of like he was a rookie. He didn't really have the um, the clout with the referees. And then as he started to get better and as he started putting and up more points complain and complain more probably. and the fan bases were complaining more, that's when he started to get the calls, and then his everything went up, his free throws per game, and that's kind of why he started to evolve as a player. So I think he's only going to get better. But I'm going to be honest with you, man. I think the strides that he makes as a player this season, I don't think it will have much to do with the height that he has. I think he could probably stay at 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he would probably still make the jump that he's going to make this year. I don't think that the height the, is really that big yeah of a factor. The, the thing is is he already plays above the rim so much and like say like steph curry makes a, a two inch growth spurt like that's pretty that's major big. he can shoot over some bigger guys now and what you know maybe that'll help ant the mid-range and such but like you know like we were saying he already he already has the athletic ability to shoot over people just with jumping like that i don't know i don't know we'll see what six six does to him all right, you know what we will see right now? Um, the man of the hour, Gregory Weasley, has uh, he's in the waiting room right now, so we're going to bring him in. Um, and here he is, Greg Weasley. Um, welcome to the Timberwolves Talk podcast presented by Bass Hole Media. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good there, guys. I'm happy to be back on the podcast. Good to see uh, Peyton and Chris back out there on the YouTube talking about the Timberwolves. Happy to be here. Well, um, congratulations, Greg. You are the second reoccurring guest that we have ever on this have had on this podcast. So you joined the likes of, uh, should I say, Dougie Wilson? Dougie Wilson, oh. Greg Weasley, the only ones to come on twice. Got to say, I'm honored to be on that list, man. Dougie's an absolute legend. Happy, happy for it. So, Greg, um, first off, just how's the family, man? How's life been treating you? 
you know, it's been better. We had better times, but uh, we're getting through it. Yeah, that's I 100% understand. So we were going to, you know, at the, at the beginning of this segment, I don't know if you caught it. Um, well, actually, you weren't on, so definitely you did not catch it. But who is your least favorite Timberwolf and why? Oh, is that a bum Culver still on the team? No, he's he's gone now. Uh, who uh, who is it? Who is it, Greg? Who do you think? Who do you think? The worst, your least favorite Timberwolf. Oh boy, uh, my least favorite Timberwolf. That is a tricky one. Uh, I will have to say. Uh, Jake Lehman, he's still on the team. <laughs> he is. He is. We were just talking about Jake. What? What about Jake? Uh, what? What do you not like about Jake Lehman? You know, just a bit too uh, inconsistent for me. Too many ups and downs. Sometimes I feel like he can play ball, but other times I feel like he just shrinks, and that can get on my nerves a bit. Shrinks yeah, he, he he doesn't really live in the big moments. Honestly, you saw a couple of really big miss threes from Jake Lehman. I feel like in, in some crunch time moments, which is it's it's really tough when he's your starting four. You know, going into the season. Yeah. Is that what you guys you guys think he's going to start at the four? Last year he started the first game as at the four. We had Jake Lehman in the starting lineup, and and we still me and Chris still somehow thought we were going to have a winning season. Think about that, Greg. Um, you guys you guys are optimists. I got to give you that. That's for sure. We are. I'd say we're one of the we're the rare optimists in the Tim Rose fan base. Besides you, obviously. Um, I have another question for you. So obviously it's a touchy subject. Um, I know you are your pro Wancho Hernan Gomez. Um, how, how'd you feel yep. about that trade? Um, with him leaving the team. You know, I was sad to see uh, Wancho go, but uh, I think you know it was time for him and Rubio to maybe get a new start. And uh, I'm happy with the guys they brought in. So, so the real question is, what do you do with the Wancho jersey you bought? Did you have I'll insurance put, on that? Oh, no insurance, but I'll maybe <laughs> have to uh, put that up in the man cave and like the Ring of Honor slash Hall of Fame of Timberwolves legends. Yeah, so yeah. I, w- I was texting with Greg actually a couple of days ago, and um, he told me, he, so he had just bought a Timberwolves Wancho jersey, and then when he got traded to the, to the uh, Grizzlies, he just bought a Wancho jersey for the Grizzlies. Yep, and then now Wancho gets traded to the Celtics. So now, yep, are you going to get another Celtics jersey? You can have oh. three Wancho jerseys, or is that get a little creepy at that point? If you have uh, three it might, jersey, it might, <laughs> it might be a little bit on the creepy side. It's a lot of money buying those customized Wancho jerseys. Like those were in the team store. I had to shell out a pretty penny for that Grizzlies Wancho jersey. But uh, maybe once I get my next paycheck, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Either that or going to casino. So we'll see. Gotcha, gotcha, man, and. We have another question for you. Actually, we were just talking about it. Um, it was made a big deal in the Timberwolves, you know, community. Anthony Edwards growing t- two inches. There's reports that he could possibly be the next Michael Jordan. You know, now that he's two inches taller. Do you buy into that or? Oh, Chris, I'm buying all into that. Absolutely, <laughs> six foot six Anthony Edwards. I think could maybe be up there with one of the best basketball players of all time. But that's just me, Greg. You know, be maybe being a bit of an optimist, but. Uh, no, I'm I'm super excited to see what Ant brings next season. So, what do you what do you think that extra height does for him on the court? I think it allows him to work a little bit, maybe more in the post a little bit, like a little bit more like Kobe was able to work down that low post and uh, maybe expand his range or expand his game a little bit more on the inside. It's an excellent take, Greg. Me, me and Peyton honestly didn't even cover the the low post capabilities now with the new height. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely see it. Yeah, that's something he hasn't really had in his game yet, and I think that. He could definitely just develop that with this new height. Um, Greg, quick question. You're, yeah. you're always in the comment section. I like to give you the pinned comment most times. Who else in the comment section do you, do you want to give a little shout-out to? Who else um, do you appreciate communicating with in the comment section? Ooh, um, I'm, I'm trying to – hopefully I don't get his name wrong, but uh, I am Tim Rolls fan, perhaps. Hmm. He yeah, I, think you got it, I think you got it right. It's something like that. It's very hard yeah. name, very original. <laughs> He's he he, he, com- he comments a lot, and I uh, really appreciate all the input he puts in. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Um, yeah. So I hope the family's doing well, man. I've uh, I'm always hoping that you're doing great, and anytime you can come on the show, it's a great show. So really appreciate it. Absolutely. You, man. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for having me on. Really appreciate it. You have any parting words you'd like to say? Uh, no, nothing at the top of my head, but uh. 
hopefully everyone's just doing well in life, you know, with the COVID and all that. And hopefully you can find some enjoyment at this upcoming uh, Timberwolves season. All right. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate uh, it. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye. Right. There we have it, guys. Greg Weasley. What a gem of a person right there. Yeah. If And, I mean, we found him in the comment section of our video. So if you guys have anyone else that – really sticks out to you in the comments that you want to join the show, just uh, maybe give them an upvote in the comment section and we can definitely make that happen. We love, we love interacting with the fans. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, yeah. Like this, this show has been, it's been an interesting one today. Honestly, I feel like we're kind of, you know, we say it again that we're in the dead zone kind of, of, you know, the off season getting a little bit closer, but not, not to the point where the excitement is completely there yet. So we need you guys to help us for the next episode immensely. I think we're going to do another, you know, comment section episode. You guys seem to really like it when we uh, pin your guys' comments and put them up on the screen while we're doing the podcast. So, you know, if you guys want to be featured on the show, you need to drop a comment below. Um, we usually try to go through most of them. If you guys drop a somewhat, no it doesn't even need to be it just needs to be whatever if you say the stupidest thing ever we'll put you on the screen and we'll talk about it um ideas maybe mock trades um projected points per games the projected record and why make sure to say why we don't want to just hear what your record you want to hear why so we can kind of discuss it and yeah we'll go through i think i think if i think me and chris can promise maybe every single comment that's left on this video we'll do yeah, so I mean, if you guys put up 200 comments, we'll, it's going to we'll be a two-hour two hour special, but it's going to happen. Yeah. And yeah, I remember um, last year when we did this, it, it did it did pretty well. We got a lot of engagement with the fans and everyone just kind of being able to, to, to give their part because not everyone can come on the show like Greg did. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see what you guys have to say. And um, I know this one wasn't, you know, the most action-packed Timberwolves talk, but we had Greg on. We talked about... Um, you know, just just what the future is kind of holding for us. Should we? Should, I think there's one more thing we should talk about. Um, I mean, so last episode we kind of dove in on Carl Anthony Towns' um, projected stats, and I feel like we should talk about a player today that doesn't really get much hype. He's kind of the forgotten star on our roster. That's D'Angelo Russell. I mean, you heard the news with Meta World Peace saying that he is going to be a champion one day. Um, I know you've always been pro D'Lo. You got the D'Lo jersey. You got the D'Lo shirt. What um? What are your expectations for him coming into the season? Um, expectations or what I would like from him? I mean, I, I don't know. Whatever you're thinking. I mean, expectations. Sure. Let's just see expectations. What do you expect? You know, I would expect anywhere in the 17 to 21 points per game category. You know, I think for D'Angelo, I think that's a fairly reasonable, you know, ask of him considering the amount of scores we have on our team and the, the volume that's going to be have to be shared upon this Timberwolves team. Um, I would like to see, you know, the assist somewhere in the seven, seven mm. range, I think is very fair. I think five rebounds is a very doable goal. And, um, I just expect him to be a little bit cleaner this season, you know, with the passing, with the leadership, with the game management, um, you know, first full year, first full off season with the Timberwolves. Now this year, I think it, everything's going to go a lot smoother this year for him. Yeah. I, I kind of picking up on that. I think that where we can see a huge improvement in D'Lo's game is in the passing and in the, um, it's floor general ability, because think about last year. A few of the times when D'Lo was on the court, he was also sharing the court with Ricky Rubio. And now with Ricky Rubio gone, the offense is going to be – it's going to be up to D'Lo to distribute the ball. And now with Anthony Edwards stepping up in, as a scorer, he's going to have more assist uh, – people to assist to, Malik Beasley in the corner. I think we can see his assists just really skyrocket this year compared to years past. Yeah, I think I I definitely think that's a very doable goal for him is to, you know, um outmatch his assist totals from the years prior. I think I think there's a lot to improve on in his game. Um I mean it's tough. It's 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 tough. He's a tough player to, you know, evaluate because he brings a set of skills that I I don't even know who really emulates. Like I think Mike Conley might be the closest, but like I don't really know who plays like D'Angelo Russell in the NBA. No one. 
And that's why it's such a hard – he's kind of such a hard player for people to, like, like. Mm-hmm. is just that I feel like he's going to be more appreciated after his time is done in the NBA. I feel like he's just – he's not the flashiest. He's not the most athletic player, but he's just – he gets it done and he's his his passing is elite. And when he was at Ohio State, that's something that really was showcased. His passing was one of the main reasons why he was drafted so high in the league. And I think people forget that with D'Angelo. I think D'Angelo should go back to the uh the buzz cut with yeah. the fade. And I think he should just wear I think he should uh just cut his cut his eye open again and put that patch on. I think that's the best D'Angelo Russell we've ever seen. Yeah, dude. He uh, before the VC man, he was a different, he was a different breed before the VC. Yeah. Um, stuff. But yeah, I'm I'm excited for D'Lo this season. I really do think he's. I think people forget about him just with the way that Ant has grown in popularity over the last year. I mean, pe- he's kind of the forgetting piece, and everyone's just so willing to throw him out in these trade rumors, like, oh yeah, let's just get get rid of D'Lo for Ben Simmons. But you got to remember, he's a very important part of our team. And he's he's one of the most clutch players in the NBA. I would agree. I would he is that agree. that pull up three in transition is is elite. Yeah, um, we've, we've only seen it a couple times, honestly, for the Timberwolves. Hoping to see it a, a few more this year. For sure, man. So when when are we gonna get a haircut? When is that gonna happen? Are you gonna keep growing it out and try to try to get it out way out there? I mean, and do you do you do you put stuff in it to make it puff out like that, or is that not. just that's straight just, out of bed? You just wake up. That's and that's a, just puffed out like that. That that is natural. Yes, that's a natural puff. Um, do the ladies do the ladies like that, or is that like is that are you trying something? I don't. Know. I mean, I don't know. Right now, I'm single, so maybe maybe not. Maybe I got to switch it up, Peyton. Would that maybe be yeah, a, you got to get the a strategy. Fight fade, maybe I don't know. Maybe we should ask Darren. We'll leave it in the, we'll leave it I in think, the comments, maybe. <laughs> I think we should ask Darren what, what you should do with it. But um, I had one more thing. Oh, opening week for the Bears. Obviously, you, you're you one of the few Bears fans in Minnesota. Um, you've always been true to that. Ever since ever since we were in elementary school, you've always been a big Bears fan. Yep. Um, and now you guys actually have something to look forward to with uh, Justin Fields. Do you think – who do you play, first of all, and are you going to win? And is he even starting? I don't even know. So he's he's not going to be starting this week against the uh, the Los Angeles Rams. So, you know, there's a there's a couple theories to the young quarterback, you know, development. I think. I mean, obviously, you look at like Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and those guys all had to wait their turn. And I think mm-hmm. that's, I, I do well. I do think that is valuable. I think it was a different time for Rodgers and Brady. Um, they had better quarterbacks in front of them at the time. Um, they were on winning te- when they were drafted. They were on winning teams. Um, Alex Smith was still a high caliber quarterback who was bringing the chiefs deep into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And you look at the bears situation and it's a little bit different. Andy Dalton is, this is his first year with the team. It's not like he's owed anything. He's not owed a starting job by, well, he he is because didn't they guarantee him a starting spot? They did promise him (laughs) a job, but that, (laughs) so he is old before the draft. He is old. I mean, can you keep who does that? In the NFL? Who does that though? Who who promises someone a starting job? Like I, I think who, who promises a 33 year old? Like who makes prom? Like that's what I'm saying. I don't know. But then you look at the younger generation of quarterbacks, such as Justin Herbert or Lamar or Josh Allen, and they were all tossed into the fire within four weeks. And you all saw what happened to them. They're the next wave of quarterbacks. You know, Deshaun Watson. He he came in in the second half of the, his first game ever. That's so a bad I mean, example. I don't think yeah, he's – he was. Can, he was can, we, that, can we throw Deshaun Watson's <laughs> name? I don't, I don't really know. How oh, we, we, don't, we don't associate with Deshaun at the moment. We might. We might. We might want if, he, if he gets innocent. But um, yeah, 20, that, I, 2022 is a little tough to come back from, I, I feel like. Yeah, you know. Uh, but, um, but I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm on the wave of I think he's obviously – probably better more I, I you know i don't know andy dalton's been around for a while he's won playoff games um you know he's thrown a lot of yards he's probably obviously smarter right now as a qb obviously i don't think he's as talented as justin fields but you know why not feed andy dalton to the wolves with you know aaron donald and jalen ramsey but that's right. that's that's the right. other thing man that's that's that is the other thing though is you're not going to get a week off in the nfl you know you're going to have the Browns week three and you're going to have miles Garrett coming at you and he might rip your helmet off and hit you with it. You just never know. Yeah. Um, I guess a hot, a hot take. I'd, I'd rather have Kirk cousins on my team than Justin Fields. 
or Andy Dalton. So I just want to put that out there, make sure people know where I stand. Um, guys, leave those comments, please, because uh, I, I, I want to do a three-hour episode of just going through all your comments. I, I, would, I would enjoy that. Um, uh, yeah, leave your comments. Let's hope there's some Timberwolves news that this next upcoming week, some more more topics for us to talk about. Um, we're tr- we're trying, guys. We're we're trying to bring you all the you know all the current news, and that's why I think we have to do a lot of speculative segments yeah. in the episode, is because there's just nothing happening right now, right now with the Timberwolves. And right, I mean, we got to be we got to get creative with it. I we were even thinking about talking about what if Carl Anthony Towns was the one who grew two inches? How would that affect his stats? I mean, we had so many random things, but uh, you know. Give us I'm some just, ideas. Give us some ideas below. What what do you guys want to hear us talk about? For sure. So thanks for watching this episode. I know it's a little shorter than normal. Uh, special thanks to Gregory Weasley for coming on. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. And hopefully we'll have a ton of comments to talk about. So thanks, guys.